Now, let's talk about what's going on stateside. Donald Trump has won at least 12 of the 15 state primaries after Super Tuesday yesterday, meaning he is on track to be the next Republican candidate to face Joe Biden in the US presidential election. Joining me right now is former advisor to both the Clinton and Bush administrations. That's Steve Gill. Hello, Steve. How are you? Good. Good morning, Julia. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, I mean, normally, I've covered so many of these things over the years, you get quite excited about Super Tuesday. That's when, you know, it thins down the field and then you find out who the candidate's going to be. This was already a slam dunk uh, for Donald Trump. And we know perfectly well the incumbent Democrat uh, is Joe Biden and he's going to... So did we learn anything new from the results from Super Tuesday, which are, of course, still coming in? Well, it was, a, it was a big night for uh, Donald Trump, but you have to have about 1,200 delegates uh, to, to secure the nomination at the Republican convention. And he's closing in on that number, picked up 700 or so just last night. So he's closing in on that number. And the same thing for, for Joe Biden. He's, he's pretty much secured the nomination. So we really kind of know who the two main players are going to be. The, the challenge is how do they do their strategy going forward? I was at a meeting with Ari Fleischer, the former uh, Bush press secretary the other day, and, and he pointed out that they hid Joe Biden in the basement last time. Uh, they're going to hide Joe Biden in the basement at uh, uh, <laughs> Camp David this time, and Camp David doesn't even have a basement. Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, you have Donald Trump uh, that they're going to want to focus all their attention on. Yeah. If, if Trump focuses on policy, he wins. If it's about his personality, he loses. The problem for the Trump campaign is he wants it to be all about him. So uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see how that strategy plays out going forward. Absolutely. And again, you think back to the 2020 election, Joe Biden was supposed to be you know, the, the unifying candidate after such, you know, division in the country. But again, it was taking place during COVID, during lockdowns. And there wasn't a campaign. There weren't campaign rallies, the sort of thing that, of course, Donald Trump thrives on and, and make good TV. As you say, we barely saw anything of Joe Biden. It's going to be fascinating to watch those TV debates because Donald Trump you know, opted out of the ones that the Republican candidates saying he didn't need to do them, which he was quite right about. Uh, but it, it, it would be untenable, really, for Joe Biden uh, to opt out of those debates against uh, Donald Trump when they do finally come after the, 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 the Democrat and Republican conventions in the summer. But um, let's talk about Nikki Haley, because that girl is still hanging on. I mean, those fingernails must be bloody and raw by now. <laughs> she is holding on for dear life to stay in the race. Um, in any normal season, She'd have been long gone. She did. She failed to win South Carolina, where she was governor, for goodness sake, for six years. Uh, Donald Trump won that, hands down. Uh, she, she's won, didn't she win uh, Vermont uh, uh, overnight? Uh, and and she's, she's won, won in, was it New, not New Hampshire, she won another small state. But she's, she's getting a few votes, but only in states where independents and Democrats even can vote for the candidate. Um, why is she still there? Well, exactly. And, and yes, she apparently barely won in Vermont, who have socialist Bernie Sanders representing them in the U.S. Senate. So not exactly uh, the kind of the base of America. Uh, and I think one of the CNN polls pointed out 85 percent of her voters, according to exit polls, uh, give a positive approval rating to Joe Biden. That, that, I think, gives you some indication of how many crossover votes are giving her whatever she is getting in these uh, in these Super Tuesday states. She's hanging on because money talks. Uh, the, the millionaires, the, the billionaires, the anti-Trumpers that are fueling her campaign to hurt Trump uh, are putting a lot of money into the coffers, continuing to run ads, a lot more ads than uh, uh, Donald Trump's campaign is running. Uh, and it's all about hurting Trump. And she's just being uh, a, an easy tool for them to yeah. use. And, and uh, there are a lot of people, the political consultants, that are making an awful lot of money. I think the challenge going forward, I think Lord Hayward made a great point in your last segment, at some point, the, the policies, the perceptions of the voters are baked in. They are, they are set. So if Joe Biden wants to change the policies of, of uh, the economy, if he wants to change immigration policy, if he wants to change foreign policy, it, it will take a while for any of that to set if he was willing to do it. And, and we're about a month or so from whatever the economy is, is going to be perceived and, and it's not going to change. Whatever the illegal immigration deal is, is not going to change. The lack of energy policy is not going to change. So we're about two months from all of that being baked in and, and Biden and the Democrats can't do anything to change that perception, which is why uh, President Trump needs to talk about policy, policy, policy every day, every moment yeah. and, and not engage inside of the attacks that he's still doing on on Nikki Haley or even uh, to some extent on Joe Biden. The interesting thing is, is actually a lot of his his base really quite enjoy a lot of that stuff. They love, <laughs> you know, he's sticking it to the man sort of thing. But, they, you know, 
as we know, the base isn't isn't what you need to win uh, the actual presidential election in November. He needs to widen that appeal. And, and I've been saying on the show for quite a long time now, you know, look, I've said, you know, I don't think Donald Trump is fit for public office. I said it in 2016, said it in 2020. I thought Joe Biden was a terrible candidate, terrible offering from, in fact, all of the offerings from the Democrats were pretty awful last time around. But um, maybe the best of a bad lot, but I thought he was a better choice. Now, I completely understand why someone would say, I'm going to vote for, uh, for, for Donald Trump. I, and I think there are going to be lots of people who, who they'll hold their nose and they'll go and vote for him. And as you say, it's about the policies. It's about the cost of living. It is about things like mass immigration. Two million people arriving illegally in, in America last year. I mean, we're talking about the people on the channel boats here in the UK. That's on a different scale, isn't it? These things are bread and butter issues. And the average American, even though their economy is a lot better, Nick, than our economy is most of Europe right now, the average American has basically got poorer over the last 20 years. And they want someone who's going to do something about it. As simple as that. And he's making it clear he will take bold action. I think people are wanting that. Uh, and you're right. Some people despise his personality, but those policies are winning for him if he will stick to that agenda. Talk about uh, the future. Talk about forward thinking, not not looking back, but but you're right, Julia. Some people are going to hold their nose. Some people are going to need scuba gear to go into the ballot box and vote for uh, for Donald <laughs> Trump. But when they look at the economy, when they look at the safety in their communities, as these illegals pour in and, and harm, fill our hospitals, fill our schools, fill our jails, harm people in this country. I think that's going to be a key issue that for for suburban women, Absolutely. that's going to have a big City, impact. Suburbs, and Steve Gill, I know we're going to talk to you about this many times in the future. Thank you so <laughs> much indeed from advice to the Clinton and Bush administration. Thank you. Quick thought from uh, Benedict Spence on that. I think that final point there about safety is really key. Yeah. America has never been a high trust society like ours once was. It has always been one where there's been a wash with guns and you're seeing a massive uptick in the amount of crime that just is going unchecked by police forces. And, you know, that's a knock-on effect from Black Lives uh, yeah. Matter. Well, culture right, wars, which, again, culture, Biden exactly. has accentuated, exactly. as indeed our government has, rather than doing something about it, and then saying, oh, isn't this awful? Well, sorry, but you need to take action. Exactly. People, people have had enough.